going down everyone mojobreak.com the hype episode number 96 in full effect we got an action-packed episode today guys we're gonna talk otani we're gonna talk nba draft zion rj barrett all those cats and their impact on the hobby for the 1920 season um so it's gonna be an exciting show here and I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in. You can find the podcast version on iTunes, Overcast, Pocket Cast, multi-platforms to listen to it. Or you can watch it live like you're doing now here on YouTube. So, Dan, what's going down, dude? I thought you were going to say multicast. Uh, multicast. I thought that was going to be one. It was multicast? Is that yeah, one? That, that, that's a guy. I think I'm going to buy that domain name if it's not taken already. I'm sure it is. Multicast. Cast. <laughs> Cask. <laughs> so are you ready? For, for the, the sh- NBA for the, draft. For the show? Yeah. I'm ready for the show. Ready for the NBA draft. Um, I was talking to you outside. What if Zion doesn't go number one? Like, what if... What if... <laughs> what if... <laughs> what if the Pelicans trade the first overall pick for LeBron James? That wouldn't happen. And Anthony Davis is like, what am I doing here? <laughs> they can't, if, they, if they did not draft Zion, no. that would be a no, absolute but maybe, failure. But maybe LeBron's like... I can't win a championship without Lonzo. That's what LeVar Ball said. <laughs> no LA. No LA. No LA. No LA. <laughs> but no. Matt, well, it's I mean, it's got to be 100%. I mean, not even 99.9%. No, 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 no. It could be I would say 90 99%. There's still that 1% chance. It can be like Maybe what if like a Mike, what, Mike like a Mike Ditka what, like okay, Ricky Williams? Okay, I would happens. actually say less than ninety percent. What if Zion goes out tonight and he's in he's in Brooklyn, chilling, getting his party on, gets in a little trouble, gets in a lot of trouble, or a video comes out tomorrow, or a video comes out tomorrow That's, that could happen, and then you see you see him drop. Yeah. Well, think about that, guys, because that's our uh, second or third segment. We're going to talk about uh, the NBA draft and uh, some of their early autos. Panini had an event, so we'll go over some of the things that happened there with early signings of some of these cats. C-Rad, did you go see Mickey again? Yes, I did. Oh, how was it, man? Star Wars, baby. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, how is that? You can drink over there? Hell, yeah. They got, a, they got a cantina. It's like it's like being at the bar in a movie. It's like a Star Wars club. You got aliens dancing around. What? Uh, butt naked. So. Nice. How hard was it to get a drink? Was there everybody at Disneyland in line for a drink over there? Well, no. The uh, Star Wars is not officially open in, to the public until the 24th. So what you have to do is you, I had to, for the first time ever, book a hotel room at Disney to be able to get reservations to go in there early. So they give you a four-hour time slot, and then, yeah, you go. So it wasn't as busy. So as, you have four hours of drinking, basically? No, they, they cap you at the bar. You only can get two drinks. Oh, that's it? It's Disney after Are all. Are they $20 a drink? They were up. They're like fifteen dollars. Oh yeah, I was gonna. That was my question. I'm like, I'm all, how, how much for how much for uh, some Star Wars booze? They they, they had this uh, drink called the Jedi Mind Trick. It looks like an Adios MF. Oh no. Um, so. <laughs> oh yeah, blue, yeah. <laughs> Dude, which uh, which which one which one did you stay at? Which hotel? Uh, the Disney one. Oh okay okay. That's the only one I haven't said. I did the Paradise Pier and the other one, but haven't done that one. So, um, but yeah, they get a little pricey. But it is a good time to be able to get in there in a magic morning and all that other fun stuff. But uh, we'll jump right into Otani. He's been in the news. He's back. He's having a good run here. Um, as you can see in this article here, written by a baseball columnist, it turns out half of Shohei Otani is still pretty darn good. So I want to discuss the hobby impact. Shohei's not pitching. His prices aren't quite where they were last year, but they're starting to creep back up. Um, he's, I think he's batting 375 over the last 15 games. Uh, he's got nine home runs on the season and he hasn't even played the whole season. Is this a good time? If you've been holding on, is this a time to sell or do you just wait it out? And I, and I don't, I know Dan has a very passionate opinion on this. So I'm gonna go right to Dan on this one. So I've been talking about this, this homie for a while. And I said, he's one, one of those once in a generation talents. 
and you hold on to Shohei because he is only going to get better. And I think he's still going to pitch at some point. But like the uh, like you just said, half of Shohei is still pretty darn good. Um, dude, I he's the real deal. My only question and my only debate is next year he comes back and he pitches. Well, we all know what happens when he pitches is he doesn't really he doesn't hit the next game. I don't I don't think I think they're going to revisit him pitching. I don't think he is a starting pitcher and I don't think he will be as effective as starting as a starting pitcher, but maybe as a relief pitcher, maybe as a guy out of like maybe he comes in and pitches once every, you know, just another another arm out of the bullpen. I don't yeah. I don't think I don't think he'll be a pitcher. Well, let's just say he goes back like a, to a being starting a, pitcher. Let's just say he let's just say hypothetically next year he goes back as a starting pitcher. So here's my biggest issue is that the hobby basically guys will go up in value based on their statistics. Um, Shohei Otani will not lead in any category because he will not pitch full time and he will not hit full time because he does half of each basically. But when he was pitching, he was putting up good numbers pitching. He was, and he was putting up good numbers hitting. But let's just say he. I mean, the the best at what he does. Well, there's nobody else in that well, category. Well, he's the best. He's the best at what he does. But unless the Angels win a championship, my thing is, is I think we've reached the pinnacle of where his value is going to be again. I think it's time to sell, personally. No. Nah. I think that no. the the romance, the love affair, the honeymoon period was last year. We You got, you got the guys that bought, and they're holding on. They're going to hold on it forever. They're, they're Japanese collectors, and they're just going to hold on to every Shohei Otani. The guys that are trying to move the market and try to sell and flip, I feel like that train has passed. He, unless he's, he's, he, he's unless he's he young, wins like a Cy he, Young, he's young. He hits for power. He can pitch. He's in the right market. Um, I I think. What do you guys think in the chat? Are you hold? If you have an Otani like those cards we just showed, like maybe a Transcendent Auto or a Atomic Auto, and I'm being a little because uh, we have an Ot- Atomic Auto, not as good as that grade. I think it's in a couple slides past here is uh, we have an Atomic Auto. We uh, consigned it for somebody, and somebody didn't pay. We wound up owning it. We sent it in for grading. It got a 9. Um, it didn't get a 9.5. But that 9.5 recently sold for 4200 So it was close to the amount that we sold the raw one for when we consigned it on release month. So I'm like, do I put this on eBay right now, or do I risk him fading into a Dice K Matsuzaka Oblivion and it being a $100 card? That's that's the fear. I mean, that's the yeah, fear. Yeah, but of Di- Dice K was only a pitcher, right? Right. And if you I, you have that international market as well, and he's young, he's young. He, he's a lot younger than some of the Japanese guys that have came around, like Ichiro and uh, Mat- uh, Matsui. He's young. He's he's in his prime, and he's playing while rehabbing from Tommy John. There's not a lot of players who can do that and still. I mean, and still be. I mean, a, a it's functional a functional major league ball, ball player. I'll give you that. That's a phenomenal story. But I mean, we were looking at prices last week and I, and I definitely, if you haven't tuned into episode 95, we went over prices of Mookie Betts, Chris Bryan, Bryce Harper, Aaron Judge, and Otani. And we looked at their prices last year and we compared them to this year. And Otani's base auto was $1,400 compared to a Mookie Betts. So it was like three or $400. So I felt like that hype was too inflated. I felt like he'll never get back to that. Like, same thing with Luca. I mean, Luca's prices are crazy right now, but next year it's going to get erased because of Zion. The hobby seems to move on, and if you're trying to cash out, and I know there's people that collect, and they you guys listen to this because you collect and you keep, and that's great. That's the essence of collecting. But there are guys that try to maybe fund their PCs by getting cards, flipping them, making a few extra dollars here and there, and buying more packs. I don't know. I I, I feel like right now is the time for Otani. I disagree with you. I think Otani is a good investment right now. I think you buy, and I think you hold. But everybody had to be crap in their pants last year. Anybody that was heavily invested in Otani that saw him go down, not play the rest of the season. And, you know, I mean, he did enough to keep his prices relatively but, but high. It, it, says, it speaks volumes without the player. Um, he had Tommy John, and he actually held off on the surgery and played the end of the season on a team yeah. that wasn't competitive. So, I mean, he he's he's legit. Well, and that's the only thing I'll give you is you can't, have any past data on a guy like this but the only thing i know is our intention spans in this hobby are zero to nil it's whoever's next right so i mean how many people have jumped into this hobby this year going after vlad 
and they don't even have any Otani. I think in 10 years we're going to be still talking about Otani. Do you think he reaches trout level pricing? I, I don't I don't know. I don't know about that. But I think in 10 years we're still talking about him. But like I said, if he pitches and hits, he's never going to lead in any stat categories because it's not possible. But who who cares? Look, the stat, stat is what stat, stats guards. Stat category. No, does it? Aaron, dude, if does Aaron it, does it? Yeah, Whit, Aaron Whit Mer- Judge. Whit Merrifield led the league in hits. Home runs, I should say. Okay, I, I, I so now that. okay, now we're talking home runs. Yeah. So not all categories. Not all categories. But I mean, I'm pretty sure Whit Merrifield, you can go get his cards for what, three bucks? Yeah. Well. And you can make an argument that he's he's one of the best hitters in the league. He didn't do it. He has to do that long enough. Um look at Yelich. Yelich was doing good for a good period of time, not only on Florida, He's but in the, the minors. Yelich is the best player in the league but right it, now, and his cards are not... They're, they're not, high. They're No, but they're not a, They're not Mike Trout high. No. They but, should be Mike Trout but, high, but they're not Mike Trout high. But you can make an argument that it took a long time for Christian Yelich's cards to... For, for Christian Yelich to get proper due like he's getting now. It took a long time for him to earn that respect. So if Whit Merrifield... Well, he doesn't, he doesn't have the international market like Otani does. True. And true. Trout doesn't have the international market that Otani has. Nobody has it. So you can't compare them no, to anybody. but see, you, 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 I'm t- you know what? And I'm tired of hearing the international market. So you're saying guys in Japan don't buy trout cards just because he's not, not Japanese? They would prefer if he was. And they're not going to buy Zion? They're not going to buy Zion in Japan? I don't, it doesn't matter. If a guy's good enough, he's going to sell worldwide. It doesn't I, matter if he's Japanese. Whatever. I mean, we're going to be we're gonna be here 10, year, 10 years from now talking about Otani and just, man, Back in 2018, 2019, we should have been swooping up as many Otanis as we possibly could. I hope so. I really do. But my, you know, I'm like the guy and uh, who, you know, who wants to be a millionaire. I don't know how, how our roles change this time. Like, you're the get off the lawn guy. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm all go out and collect and buy. And because I feel like his prices no, are too no, high. No, it's because his name isn't Austin Riley. Well, I'm not. Yeah, I like Austin Riley. No, no, duh. No. <laughs> I like Austin Riley. I don't have any Austin Rileys. I should, but. Um, just his prices were high coming out of the gate. Now, if he was like Aaron Judge was like a couple hundred bucks, and then it went, it moved up, right? I just, I don't know. Uh, w- w- wait and see on Otani. I just felt like the hype was so pumped last year that everybody drove up the market, and I don't ever think it'll get there. See that picture right there? It's Mike Trout. He's like looking at Otani. He's like, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think it's completely the opposite. Mike but. Sosha is over there. He's just like staring. He's all, what do I gotta do to win a game? <laughs> yeah, he is. Hey, but you know what? They are 500. The okay. Angels are 500 now, um, which is a good thing. because Otani came back. Yeah, he probably added some wins. Um, the Angels could make a run, and, you know, like we said before, Trout needs to win a World Series as well to validate his number one player in the league status. I mean, you got to you gotta put some rings on the hands to say you're the best player in baseball, in my opinion. But So we'll see. We'll keep an eye on uh, Otani. Hopefully he continues. I mean, I would love to see him continue this this run that he's he's back on. I think he went 0 for 4 yesterday. But I think, he, I think he hit for a cycle last week. He hit for a cycle. He's been hitting home runs consistently. Um, so he's his value, like I said, his values are popping up. He does it people, all. Those people that were waiting, you may want to try to put it up for, and I'm not saying you do, may a, do hold an it. auction. You may want to hold it. But not do an auction, but put it up for a high buy it now and see what happens. Because ah. the, the prices are going up almost to where they were last year. Which I don't think it can t- can t- continue. So. Put it in the vault. Put it in the vault. All Put right, it in we'll the see. vault. We'll see. We'll document this. Episode number 196. We'll revisit this in a year and see where Otani's at. If he's had his second Tommy John surgery. Or he's uh, celebrating a World a Series second championship. second Tommy John surgery? Is that possible? A second one? Maybe on the other arm. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. non-throwing arm? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... But, uh, yeah, so that's, that's interesting. Um, we've got – you can hit Otani. You can hit o- Trout. There's chances in the brand-new 2019 Topps Museum Baseball. Uh, we did a full case this morning. Um, it was pretty awesome. We hit a, a nice gold-framed uh, Hank Aaron. We hit a sick Jake DeGrom, a laundry tag. So it was a, it was a really fun break, and this is one of my favorite products uh, every year since we started breaking. Uh, it started off as uh, Marquee, Marquee Baseball back in uh, – I believe it was either 2012 or 2013. I got to fact check that. Or maybe, actually, it was 2011. I'm sorry. 2011. It was 2011. And it had the frame cards. That was the birth of the frame cards. They had some awesome uh, big old jumbo swatches of like Willie Mays and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. If I'm not mistaken, um, I think it was a full bleed card. Yeah, it was a full bleed card, but they did the four mini boxes. It was almost exactly the same format. They, they didn't sell very well, and they nixed it, and then they started Museum. So in, in 2012, Museum was born, and, and we've, had, sub, we've had Museum for seven years. The subset in Marquee 
with the framed cards was called the museum collection. Yes, yes, yeah. So they, they made it its own standalone product, added some bat plates, which is another awesome thing, is uh, bat plates. You get four hits a box. There's 48 hits in the case. We're doing six box randoms to make it a little bit more affordable. We got those at forty six ninety nine. We're doing them all throughout the day. If you're listening to this podcast later, I'm sure there'll be still some on the site. Just go to mojobreak.com where all of our breaks are guaranteed uh, to fill same day, so you don't have to wait. And uh, we have a breaker, you know, hold your money forever. And go on mojobreak.com and look at the schedule. Right side PC down at the bottom on the mobile version of the site. So, but I wanted to talk NBA draft. So Panini had a pre-draft event where they were getting some initial autographs. Already, they have to put these guys to work. They're not even on a team or yet. So this is uh, R.J. Barrett, and um, Ooh, that uh oh, that is R.J. Barrett's autograph. So I wanted to discuss R.B. Um, I R- obviously R- you R- guys you guys listen to the podcast. You may want to look at Panini's Instagram. I actually cropped it and spun it around. It was a video they were showing. Uh, the best way to describe it is it's an R, almost looks like an R.P. with a screw at the end, or a little zigzag. It looks very lazy to me, and uh, you know how I feel about guys with lazy autographs. That's an 8x10 that's that's eight eight signing, right? Correct. Ooh, yeah, that, and he put it in a really weird spot. Yeah, 8x10 in the corner. We don't know if this is auto 1 or auto 10,000 that he signed the same day. I don't know. Um, I looked at some of his Duke autos that he signed memorabilia on, and they were a little bit better than this, but not much. So uh, based on his auto, ugh, I don't know, man. I hope he... Uh, I hope he changes it up. Maybe puts RJB or something. What do you think, C-Rad? What do you think of that auto? That auto is pretty bad, but... um, The player makes the autograph. <laughs> the autograph doesn't make the player. <laughs> yeah, that auto is pretty bad. I, I do like... I mean, instead of the standard, just RB, I, I do like that we got that little squiggle. <laughs> but is that going to fit on a sticker? What's he doing on stickers? You know, we got to see oh, some yeah. stickers. Yeah. It's going to look like David Robinson's auto on the card. Whew. I mean... This is the reality we're going to have to be facing with because, um, you know, t- 10 years down the line, what, what kind of autos are we going to be seeing? Are we going to see um, we're going to see some of the, you know, every year we do the worst auto of the year award. We're going to see pretty much everybody signing like that, right, in about 10 years. Do you have any Zion autos from, from Duke? Um, there is some on eBay. We could pull that up. I don't have it, is it on here. Because I, I, I'm thinking, it, is it going to be just a ZW? It could be. But one thing I wanted to say to these athletes, and if, if maybe if we start a revolution, there's not enough in this niche little hobby to really make an impact, but maybe we can start tweeting these guys. These guys are all on Instagram. They're all on Twitter. You know they see the comments. They don't reply, but you know they see the comments. If there's enough of us saying, hey, dude, you know, this is collectible. This is the equivalent of you taking a photo with R.J. Barrett and him going like, like his face. Uh, that's the equivalent because that's, that's like that's him – like, that's his signature, and it makes him look horrible. Like, get your signature right, man. That's like putting your tongue out in a photo. You're like, oh, and, you know, he's just, you know, or he's, or he's eating food in the photo or something. That's like, that's what you're valuing your signature for somebody that, who wants your signature. And you're making some faces over here. Do you not agree with what who, I'm saying? Who is that? That is Ja Morant. I think he's, he's holding that pen wrong. Oh, yeah, he kind of is. That's a. And there's Ja Morant's auto, a little bit better. I mean, but compared to R.J. Barrett, it looks like, you know. It looks like Johnny Manziel's auto. That, Johnny that, Manziel's auto looks clean. Is that Ja? That's Ja. Is that Ja? Ja Morant. But you know what I'm saying? It isn't an autograph similar to a bad picture? No, I, I get what you're saying, but I just said uh, it's the, the autograph doesn't make the player. It does. The player makes the it autograph. It does. I, you know, one of these days, if I have some I time, can guarantee you. Okay, so let's say Michael Porter Jr. comes out next year, and he is just phenomenal, just a great player. We ripped on his auto all year. It's going to look a lot better when he's out there putting up 20 points and 10 boards. His auto's not that bad. No, it's to, pretty It's pretty com- bad. Compared it's, to it's, R.J. Barrett. It's, ter- it's terribly centered. It's tiny. It never, it never fits the card. He does it on the sticker as well. He puts it on the far left side of the sticker. It's pretty bad. We ripped on it all year. Yeah, the centering, but we, the actual we, signature but we itself. Ripped, we, but it's tiny. We ripped on it all year. And when he starts performing, we're going to lose our minds and love every single Michael Porter Jr. that's pulled, and we're going to say how great it is. Well, based on his autograph, he's probably not going to be good either. Okay. Yeah, I mean. All right. Well, you should at tweet him that well, and say, hey, like, you, you, did you know that because you have a shitty-looking autograph that you're going to be a terrible basketball player? I'll try that. Okay, see cool. I'll see what I'll, Do it for I'll, me. I'll, do, I'll it, do, it, do it from your burner account. <laughs> I might have to. 
But if you look at historical data, and I like I said, I want to do an episode, and I want to look at autographs compared to skill level. Baker Mayfield, great auto. <laughs> Baker Mayfield, great. <laughs> like, who's had a really... Are you, are you going to say great player? Great player. Great player. Be- uh, most touchdowns of any rookie NFL okay. quarterback of all okay. time. Okay, let's move on. It's a knife of football season. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. <laughs> let's, Did let's, anybody else I mean, that's have the, first, the most that, touchdowns as a rookie? That's the first guy that comes to your mind. Like, well, he's he's got a Baker nice, like, Mayfield, yeah, Hall of Famer. I, I love him. I'm getting a Baker Mayfield Jeez. jersey. I'm, 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 but, like, think you know about where it. that's think, a Niner think, game? Who's the best player with the worst auto? Just any sport, anything. Best player with the worst auto? Yeah. Michael mm. Jordan's auto. Beautiful. LeBron oh. James, beautiful. I haven't I haven't seen it for so long. Aaron Rodgers, beautiful. Eh. Mike Trout, beautiful. Chris Bryant, beautiful. Bryce Harper? Bryce Harper, beautiful. No, dude, it it's the it's the perspective it's it's how you think of the player. The player no, it, no, that you no, look no, no, you no. look at the autograph and you're like that looks amazing because he's an amazing player. No. And no. I'm so stoked I got this. Yeah, I, I I could see how one would look at that but not me. I don't look at it that way. I'm trying. I, I, I'm trying. I no, because no, you can't think no, of one. No, 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 because I just can't think of what people's autos look like. Because it, it it corresponds. I I would say Giannis is probably the worst superstars auto right I can think of off the top of the dome. Ga, I mean, he's had different versions of it and stuff like that. Giannis's autos. Mm, think about it. You can't even I, throw I don't, one out. You I don't. don't you, you can't. I don't, don't want to think about it. Yeah, <laughs> because you don't. I mean, we'll, we'll revisit this in episode ninety-seven. C Rad, the worst auto of a great player. Saquon Barkley's auto oh, is not that great. great. Player? Mm, yeah. Saquon Barkley's auto kind of sucks. Okay, well, I, 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 I don't disagree. Is there. he terrible? That's not is great. he ter- terrible player? One, terrible person? One season. What, why are you, why are you pulling away here? You looking for had, something? To, try to get, try to get market data. I had to, I had to look at the Saquon Barkley auto. <laughs> Because all I have over here is Sean Mannion, and we know how his auto looks. Nah, it's it's beautiful. Great. It's great. It's a beautiful auto. Um, great players. Like I mean, we're talking about like the, the guys you named are some of the best players of all times in their sport. Right, right. I'm saying um, even like all stars or, or like Ben Simmons' auto is kind of ugly. Um, his I, is not the best. I, I, eh, what's a BS? Yeah, I haven't seen too many of them. I know <laughs> that's true. Um, that's <laughs> BS. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, <laughs> I didn't even plan to do it that way. It came out that Steph's way. Steph Curry's auto is kind of unique, but it's not the best looking. It's not either. the best. Not yeah. the best. How about it's, Kevin Durant? Kevin Steph Durant's Curry, auto is not that great. I actually do like KD's auto. I like KD's auto. Not on that. Doesn't look that good. It looks pretty good. It's not like a. It's not the squiggly line. It's not Mo Wagner. It's not Sfi Mahaliuk. Mo Wagner is the only. Does anybody guy, have? He's the only. The, he's the only guy left. Yeah, it's the only Laker left. But check out Clyde Frazier here. This, look, Clyde Frazier has the craziest looking suits every time you see him. Is that his calling card? Kind of like yours with the glasses backwards. That's your calling card. Is that his calling card? The suits. Who? Clyde Frazier. Back. That's Clyde Frazier with John Morant right there. He was doing a signing with Panini as well. Walt, Cl- Walt Frazier. Clyde. Well, Walt. Yeah, but they go Walt Clyde Frazier. <laughs> so, okay. but it, it, it's Walt Clyde Walt- Frazier. Is that his brother? <laughs> it's, he goes by both, but, you know, Walt Clyde Frazier. I've, um, I've only heard Walt Frazier. Well, yeah, you can go on his I mean, uh, maybe you, you, you can go on his Instagram. Now, well, Clyde may, Frazier. well, maybe you know him personally. I don't I know. Do. You, you know him by Clive. But I, I, I know him by Walt. I was wondering if I could show up to your wedding in that suit. I was going to ask him. You could do whatever you want. Okay, because I'm thinking about it. It's pretty awesome, dude. I mean, if I get the chicks. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think you can pull that off. I don't think you don't think so. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> confident you can't. Why do you say that? Are you sto- stereotyping? No, nope. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying I don't me? think you can pull off either one of those. The shirt either. Oh, you don't think I can wear uh, the pink Nike? I don't think so. Okay, I might have to grab one of the next I show. I don't think you can. Okay, I'm gonna wear a pink. I don't. I'm gonna wear a pink shirt in the next a show. Pink polo shirt. <laughs> can it just be a pink shirt? No, pink it polo has to shirt. Be a polo? polo shirt. Okay. Yeah, you may <laughs> want you may want to tuck it in. Like a real G. <laughs> I, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to do it. I think it'll go really well with my skin tone. You, no, you it'll can't. It'll bring out my eyes. No. Yeah, no. it will. <laughs> Maybe I should get a pink hat to go with it. You get some of that ice. <laughs> that drip? Yeah. All right. I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, but uh, I guess Panini was selling instant cards prior to the draft, so they don't even have pictures. And somebody was uh, picked this one off. Uh Panini Instant Draft Night, Zion Williamson, one of one, black rookie card. First true rookie. Well, that's debatable. So you can see that the photo, he bought it for fourteen ninety nine. 
you can see it on the left there because he took a screenshot from Panini's website and he's selling it for 5000 or best offer. He probably should have cropped out what he paid for it. What am I looking at? So Panini's already selling cards oh. uh, on, on their website. Sorry, let me preface this. So before the draft, I think they came out today. I got the notification, but I didn't have time to go on there. They were selling draft night cards, and they were selling one of ones of every guy. Obviously, the Zion William card went for fourteen ninety nine, and it probably sold instantly. This guy's immediately have it has it on eBay for five thousand dollars. Would you even pay? I mean, I know Zion is going to be the next greatest. I mean, we're going to get into that next. But do you can can would, can you think this guy's going to make a profit on this card? And that is uh, no auto, right? That's just a one of one parallel rookie Correct. from the draft night. It's going to be him holding up his Pelicans jersey, okay, and uh, him smiling, and um, it's going to have his name, and it's going to have a one on one on it. So it's going to be a one on one. Yeah, I think I think this guy's going to make money. You think he's going to make money? Mm-hmm. I can't see anybody paying five thousand, maybe two thousand, maybe. But you know, to be honest, and 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 you know, I think those Panini instant cards are absolutely hideous looking, and I'm glad for the reason that they use their good designs and and pack pulled cards, and, I think and, they, they, and they put these ones. And I don't. I don't looking. think they had that mindset where they're like, we're going to make a, a bad design for this. They don't. They, they don't. I know. That, I don't. Oh, like, round table that like way. They're all, hey, we got to save all the good the good ideas for the products, and then <laughs> the the reject ideas get put into the Panini Now cards or Panini Instant. Well, and then it's something also to mention. That Panini, Panini now, Panini now, Panini that's not, that's not that's not right. Well, because I think Tops now cards do look good. I I bought a few. I like the way they look. Um, but ever since Panini's developed the Panini Instant, which obviously don't you kind of piggybacked think, off of Tops, um, you but don't, rightfully you don't think, so. You rightfully don't think the so. Tops now cards look cheap. No, I do. No, I think they look cheap. I like the moment, and the date, and how they do it. Personally, I just think the card the card stock and well, what the, do you the think card of design these itself? I think they look cheap. I think they all look cheap. Okay. 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 And yes, it Terra Peak for cards uh, it's through eBay now. EJC. They de- they definitely don't look like like a premium card. It it looks like a like a cheap retail style. It does card. It does. Um, but I wanted to mention before we dive into Zion talk here is Zion was not at this signing. So you had R J Barrett and you had John Morant. So you had the two and three right. But you did not have Zion. So, you know, there's rumors float around that maybe Panini didn't sign Zion at this point. Uh, obviously, we need to wait a few days to see what happens. Now, they could, by them printing those cards up, it doesn't matter if he has an autograph deal or not. So that, that doesn't tell us anything. So we need to hopefully see very soon that he is at Panini or he's at one of these draft functions signing some stickers or some cards. Because if not... It'll change the whole scope of the 1920 season for basketball cards. So let's hope that they do. And he didn't sign with Upper Deck. Now, he did sign with CAA and not Rich. Um, what's his name? Rich Paul. He didn't sign with Rich Paul, which is a good sign because Rich Paul would have got him to sign with Upper Deck. Sign with CAA. And uh, so we'll see. He'll, he'll, he'll sign with Panini. Yeah. But he'll, it, it'll happen. It, it's, they don't need to make it happen until before the photo shoot. Yeah, and he's probably doing so much press that's the thing they they have they have about a solid month month and a half before they have to get a deal done yeah there's probably a lot of guys who are projected in the first round that have not worked out a deal with panini yet but he but this this guy out of anybody anybody over the last i don't even know maybe go back to oh three oh four there's never been so much hype this guy doesn't need to sign cards he has he does not need to sign any cards i mean what if he was like I'm going to take my autograph and I'm going to sell it online. I mean, this would probably be the best candidate that I could think of over the last 10 years. But we've seen that. They don't – the value isn't there. People want it on Well, I get card. that from a customer's perspective. But from his perspective, he just sells 8x10s and, and he's making more money per auto than he would get paid from. An 8x10 with just a T-shirt? Yeah. Because he can't use right. logos. He may be able how, to how do much, – How much is that, that, that Luca going for that he, that he signed? himself 50 bucks it's like a 50 yeah bucks. but see the difference there is i think he can sign an eight by ten that's licensed i think he can i don't think as he long can. as the photo is licensed because brett brett Favre signs photos and it sells it on brett and it's a picture of him in a green bay uniform oh, i thought you were gonna say something else <laughs> <laughs> signs dick pics and sends it out to chicks now. Uh, oh dude that rhymes yeah yeah there's a lot going on there that was good that was a deep that was a deep sentence right yeah, there yeah, that was yeah. a lot of a lot of content in that one <laughs> rewind it back <laughs> 
Yeah, Zion, uh, Zion, uh, Zion, and- Zion, <laughs> it's, it's Dude, John, it's, Zion, so it's John, Zion together. If they, they had a baby, <laughs> um, they were on tonight's show. Apparently, Jeff said, "I got to watch that." Both of them, yeah. So you know he's there. Then you know he's in uh, obviously in town. He was in town during the Panini function. He was somewhere in the area. Okay, so he wasn't signing cards. If you're a 19 year old kid and you're in New York and you're about ready to have the biggest day of your life. The first thing on your checklist is, I'm going to go spend one of these days signing autographs. It's not uh, Jaws' biggest day of his life. It's not R.J. Barrett's biggest day of his life. It is, but there's probably a lot of people hitting up Zion and wanting a piece of him to sit down and talk. Oh, yeah. I I bet. I bet. Yeah, he's doing commercials. I'm sure Nike probably has a campaign going on already. He's he's probably designing his first shoe. Yeah. Yeah, he probably doesn't have time to sign autos. Well, let's hope he does find time to sign autos for uh, for this hobby coming up. Um, so I wanted to talk about his impact for next year. C-Rad, how crazy do you think it is to, is going to be to get these products <clears throat> for us, <clears throat> for anybody, really? <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly my – that was my fear. I, I, I've explained it to people a, a few times on the stream while we're doing breaks. Uh, I actually, in a weird, strange, roundabout way, I was hoping that he wa- – I know Upper Deck, if they somehow get to – first of all, if – I'm going to say, Upper Deck, if they somehow get to Zion, it's going to be the biggest troll in the sports collecting history. Uh, that's number one. But I was almost hoping that they would get him. And the reason, my way of thinking of it is like, like this. Okay, we know like, you know, distributors and all that, it's going to be hard to get this product. So my thing is that if he doesn't have autographs, they, they'll they play the game less. <laughs> that's, that was my way of thinking. Like, we'll actually be able to get some of these products if he has no autographs in, the, in Panini stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's that's why I was kind of like, man, maybe he should sign Upper Deck. But I get it, you know, for a, from a collecting standpoint of, as a basketball collector, like I would love to have his autograph as well. So um, it would be similar to Simmons' season, but right. probably still on crack, right? I mean, pre- right. So I it, mean, it still be it would still be hard for us to get products. It it just wouldn't be as nuts as if if, if, if he has autographs. I mean, is it out of the realm? And we talked about this before. Luca's RPAs are steady go steadily steadily going for ten to fifteen k. Yes. Does that mean Zion's going to be 25K, 30K on oh. an RPA to 99? From, we're talking about national treasures. But, I mean, we need he needs to come out and produce, right? Like he, His hype could only carry him so much. If he comes out and he's scoring under 10 points, then his hype will die down. Yeah. He, he, but if he comes out and he, he's putting up 20 points and, you know, 10 boards and, you know, the Pelicans are – competitive then his cards will go up yeah and they'll and it'll the rpas will be an insane so amount what of does money. he need to score 20 points i think he needs to average 20 points 20 points out of the gate i I, is... I think i think he needs to go 20 and 10 well it's gonna be pretty easy when lonzo's just, just you know laying it up to him it's gonna just, be pretty just, easy when lonzo's just alley-oop just fest hurt it gets ma- lonzo's good for about 22 games a year <laughs> we'll see i believe i believe in oh is he gonna Orleans. is he gonna be healthy now this now now he's going to be healthy. Now he's going to be healthy. Now he's going to yep. be healthy. Yeah, because he gets to play the full game. And the reason why he was breaking down is because he wasn't playing. Yeah, he wasn't you, playing enough. Exactly. You listen to Lavar. Lavar hit it right on the head. Lavar was out there saying, "Oh God, you you have a Ferrari and you drive it two hundred miles an hour and then you stop it for ten minutes. Your Ferrari, you're going to blow a motor, and that's what happened to Zion. So we're comparing <laughs> Lonzo Ball to a Ferrari. Yes, you and they kept the Ferrari. <laughs> they kept the Ferrari in the garage. Well, guess what? Now the Ferrari's got an even bigger, better car coming to them, and they're going to be racing all the way down, and the Pelicans are going to be the next big thing in the NBA. All right. That seg- Mark my that, words. That, that, that segment's brought to you by Doug Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm halfway serious, guys, but I do like Lonzo Ball. So You're, uh, you, you cousins? You cousins with Lonzo and LaMelo and LiAngelo? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. From the mom's side? Yeah. Yep, 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 I am. Doug Ball. Ball. I did do a I'm trying to find the uh, I did a poll on uh, where the Pelicans would end up and I'm trying to find it. Oh, they're they're seven or eight. They'll they'll get into the playoffs. Get well, I'll, I'll tell you what the people said. Seven, seven I'll or eight. You, I'll sell you. I, I'll tell you what I'll sell you. I'll sell you on it, too. What the people said. Seven or eight. Let me see if I can find that. So you're saying seven or eight. Seven seeds. or eight. Yeah. West and is, I, the and West I, is competitive. Yeah, man. dude. They're they're not. Seven or eight. It took four. It took you had to win more than forty eight games this year to make the playoffs. And I, I think, I think seven or eight, and that's like going in the right direction. They had a good season. And I also don't think the Lakers are the champions. 
All right, so I had with Zion, Lonzo, Ingram, Hart, fourth overall pick, Randall, Drew Holiday. Where did the Pelicans finish? 7% said one or two seed in the West. Okay. 32% said third through sixth seed in the West. 24% said seven or eight seed in the West. And 37% said miss the playoffs. So more people said that they were going to miss the playoffs, but the second most was third and sixth seed. So I'm on to something here, I think. The people have spoken. No, dude, when it happened, you were just talking about championship. You're in the 7%. The first or second one. Yeah, you no, were. No, no d- dude. But third. Uh, when not, that trade happened, you're like, Pelicans win the championship. Yeah. They're unstoppable. They're, they're, dude. They got Lonzo. You don't know. The fourth pick could be amazing. Fourth pick there. Fourth pick's going to be probably and pretty they, good. And then they have. They the have fourth, a- if they were smart with the fourth pick, they'd get a real point guard. Because that's where their no, hole's they, at. No. They have a real point guard, yeah, yeah. Drew Holiday. And they have Lonzo. I mean, they got two point guards. Yeah, well, they need. Well, one guy isn't going to play. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, the uh, city of New Orleans and Popeye's chicken is ready. They came out with this in lieu of Zion. It is a, t- a six foot, 10 inch box called the Wingspan Box. It's a $75 box of hot wings, biscuits fries, dipping sauces, and it's uh, available at the Canal Street in New Orleans on Thursday for $74.69. It's, uh, it's well, Zion's wingspan is 82 inches, so it's not quite the wingspan, but it matches his height in food. You gonna eat that? I got, I got a quote. Back, back to... That looks delicious. Back to your Pelicans, though. If Lonzo doesn't stay healthy this year mm-hmm. and doesn't put up, you know, a good season... Are you off the Lonzo train at that point? No. Nah. You're just going to stay on it? You're For at least just, another year. You're just going to ride it solo? Oh, yeah. They're going to be the only one on it? Big ball Train's going by. It's just mm-hmm. Doug up there being like, I still believe in you. Yep. yep. I, mean, I, I mean, think I think his dad would be off the train at that point, too. Yeah. So, you, so you'd be the only one truly on it. I would be. Yeah, I mean, he would, he'd probably kick him off the, the Big Baller brand. No, nah, we'd still sell the Big Baller brand for the Big Ballers, you know, and that. That great, those great shoes that we bought that took forever to get. That's true, man. Those, case and those are not worth anything now. No, I mean yeah. those shoes are. What would you say? Put a, put a value put a value on our Lonzo Ball shoes. Fifty dollars. <laughs> no, I actually think I might eBay them. I I want to look. I they're I would say maybe a hundred and fifty dollars now. Maybe maybe. What did we pay for them? A uh, thousand. A thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. One thousand dollars a thousand dollars for those <laughs> you want to burn you want to learn how to burn a thousand dollars oh no dude we made, we came up dude somebody's got them on ebay for twenty four thousand dollars twenty four thousand yet yeah, somebody has them on it go to completed you, you know better than that seven hundred seven hundred dollars seven ten baby somebody bought them for seven ten yeah is that recently they're they're different looking ones they're like the laker color ones but i found well one. you wouldn't want those i found the black version ten and a half for seven hundred oh, okay see not too bad, you know. But once, once he wins multiple championships with Zion, I mean, that's a that's a great great investment. I think what we do is we just we wear them. Yeah, actually, go. I uh, think they're go, my size. Go to the gym in those. Roll that ankle. <laughs> <laughs> Probably would happen. So, yep. And uh, I think do I have something coming up in the next segment before we get into that show? Uh, before we get into the little clip. Oh. I was going to talk about this, but this was just the Anthony Davis trade, which we kind of already covered. But uh, what, did, what, what did you get for Anthony Davis? Everything. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, uh, the next fo- next thing I thought was kind of interesting, uh, we talk about Luca. Um, I saw this on the forum, and I thought, wow, um, Luca's mom apparently started a uh, lubrication uh, company. You can see it in the next slide here. And uh, it's pretty close to the auto. So, Lulu Lube. Whoa, dude. I was not this, ready for this that. Isn't, this isn't real. I was not ready for this. This, this is that's, that's no, real. That's yeah. not, that's yeah, not that's real. Yeah, that's her signature. That's it's, not real. That's not real. It is. There's no way Luca's mom has a, a lube line. <laughs> There's no way. Your hat's dead. There's no way that. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm dead. That, okay, well, I don't think his mom owns it. I haven't done enough research yet. But there is a company out there called Lulu Lube. And it's okay. pretty the U's. Look at the U's. The U's are pretty close. There's like the right spacing and everything. <laughs> so if you're listening to the podcast, I so suggest that's, that you Google so are those, Lulu Lube. Are those the uh the hitless giveaways for uh 
<laughs> no, we're going to be handing that out during Prism draft cases next year. <laughs> Lulu lube. Or maybe some of these NT cases we've had recently. Oh, uh, man. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty close. I mean, the first L, not really close. But the two U's, man. I, it could it, Luka Doncic could be selling this on LukaDoncic.com, I'm telling you. It uh, would be pretty close. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I can see the similarities. But if you have a company called Lulu and you have a cursive logo, I mean, is there any other way to do it? That's, that's. Well, yeah, well, that's Lulu Lube. So we'll link that up in the show notes if you guys want to purchase some Lulu Lube. I'm sure there's a, <laughs> I'm sure there's a website for them oh, uh, to, to get in that. It looks pretty fancy, really. I mean, it's uh, pretty fancy. It looks like kind of boutique. <laughs> like, you know, you'd have to get that at a, a National Treasures type of store, you know, oh, type thing. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, came across that. That was pretty funny. So uh, just share it with you guys. Um, you know, not safe for work, but, hey, you know, talking about lube. So I wanted to get into this, and um, this was just dropped yesterday. UPS delivers $42,000 in sports card collection to wrong address. So I went, and hopefully our video doesn't get blocked by playing this, but I guess this is going to be trial and error. So I'm going to play this little two-minute clip from, uh, I think it's Chicago, Chicago's News. And um, we'll uh, comment afterwards for you guys. Lost in the mail, a family sends a collection of sports cards across the country, but that collection goes missing. So they contacted us to get to the bottom of things. CBS investigator Dorothy Tucker looked into the lost cards and discovered a valuable lesson for us all. And the Cubs have finally won it all! When the Cubs clinched the World Series in 2016, Nick Myers was there. When he got married a year later, he just had to snap a picture in front of Wrigley Field. He is all about sports. Shirley Myers is his mom. He worked at the United Center. He worked at Wrigley Field. And collected sports cars, including some passed down from his grandfather. He had like Dick Buckus. He had um, Bobby Hall. I mean, these are going back from the 60s. When Nick moved to Seattle last year, Shirley took all the cards out of these binders, sent her husband to this UPS store in Chicago, and ship them to Nick. Wanted to have those for his children. We never thought in a million years that UPS would lose this. But it did. Everywhere it's been. The tracking history from UPS shows the package was delivered on July 3rd. By July 13th, UPS had begun an investigation. That's when she discovered. The address they put on here is 252. They live at 525. When Nick went to that address just three blocks away, it wasn't there. Hi, uh, I'm Nick Myers. He was too upset to speak with us on camera, but agreed to make this video for us to send to UPS. I spent many years of my childhood uh, collecting and, and finding and holding very near and dear, and now it's all gone. Michael Jordan, $2,454. She didn't have pictures of the cards, so she made a long list that included Stan Makita. $8,212.00. 99 cents. That's from 1961. That was in the box. Mm -hmm. That's gone. Yes. Total $42,000. The response from UPS? She said, we're not paying this. Then she says the UPS rep told her it only had to pay $100 because her husband had signed off on the label and never put a value on the contents. Did you ever see the label? I've never no. seen the label. And when Shirley asked for proof, the store sent a copy of the document her husband supposedly signed. But I didn't sign anything. I didn't even see anything. The signature line is blank. This breaks my heart. This is my son's history. We called UPS corporate, and before we could even send Nick's video, UPS investigated, concluded the store made some mistakes, and is sending Myers a check for $10,000. I can't thank you enough, Dorothy. I mean, a, a year of craziness, and you get it done in a day. <laughs> Myers says her son plans to use the money to replace a couple of the cards. Dorothy Tucker, CBS2 Investigators. Some advice from UPS to avoid a similar situation when sending a package, make sure you declare a value on the contents and confirm the shipping address. So, wanted to comment on this video. It sucks for anybody to lose a collection, especially the mail. I mean, we've had problems with packages gone missing and stuff like that. But I wanted to point out a few things. We're all collectors. Um, this, this mom, you know, bless her heart, she's trying to get his son's collection. Absolutely 100% lied. First off, all the cards were in binders. So, second off, if you look up a 1991 Michael Jordan on eBay, you can go to the next slide. There ain't no 1991 Jordan graded PSA that will sell for anywhere close to what she claims. And the biggest knock 
is the Stan Makita 1961 that she has there for eight thousand two hundred and twelve dollars. Yeah, which is one fourth of what she claims she lost. Go on eBay right now. They showed a picture of it, so it's this same card. And granted, it was in a binder, so it's probably not graded. Five hundred and fifty dollars. So, where did she get that number from? Now, I, I agree, it sucks that she lost her collection. That does suck. But what about these inflated numbers? She basically just took UPS to the cleaners, got them to pay 10K on cards that probably weren't even worth 10K. <laughs> Probably worth two thousand. Let's let's face it. Ooh, this guy had probably a lot of junk wax era cards. There was a nineteen eighty eight Mark Grace card that was valued at two hundred and fourteen dollars. Yeah. That card's worth like fourteen cents. Yeah, maybe, maybe. And and like I said, they were all in binders, so there was no way that there was any graded cards from what we could tell. Um, the guy didn't, the dad didn't check the address, just shipped out the $42,000 in cards. Where UPS screwed up is that they had that contract, but they didn't have a signature. Yeah. And I can guarantee you if they would have had a signature, they would have said, we're going to, we're going to give you a hundred dollars. Cause that's what, if you don't pay for insurance, that's what you get. You get, right. you get, you, you get lose your bucks. package, you get a hundred bucks. bucks. So you know, we all feel bad for the customers, but you guys know you sell cards on eBay. How many times have you gotten screwed? Is there there should be some kind of justice for, you know, these companies. And I'm not saying UPS deserves. They make a lot of mistakes, just like any of these big, large bailing companies do. A lot of moving parts. Things are going to happen. Something happened here. They delivered to the address that was on the label. So whoever printed the label printed it wrong. Who knows if the dad, the guy, the, the dad lives in Chicago. His son lives in Washington. I'm sure he doesn't know the address off of his top of his dome. What if he said the address that way? You know, there's a lot of things, and now this person just gets goes on the news and cries, and now, uh, you know, UPS is writing a ten thousand dollar check, which you know is nothing to them, but still, you know, this this stuff happens to d small dealers, small shops, and people like use this news outlet, and the news doesn't even do any research; they just say, "Oh yeah, it's forty two thousand dollars." <laughs> like, no, it was f maybe a couple thousand, maybe maybe a hundred bucks. We don't even know. So it's just it just stuff like this, just you know, being in this industry, knowing how much things is worth, you wouldn't be able to get away with this with anything else. You couldn't be like, I shipped out ten iPhones, and you'd be like, million dollars in iPhones. <laughs> no, an iPhone's three hundred dollars, whatever model it is, right? So you just make this up. I mean, I'm not saying they scammed UPS, but hey, there's a possibility that they could sit, they could have scammed UPS. Well, if the news wouldn't have gotten got involved, they would have received nothing. Right. So UPS they got like, bucks. UPS is like, this is terrible press we need to we need to fix this and if we cut a ten thousand dollar check they'll be okay with that and for any of you guys I like yeah. i like at the end it's like ten thousand dollars he he can go get a couple of his cards back and i'm like no he can go buy probably 10 of every single one of those cards right he basically just sold his crappy collection and he collected in the 80s for ten thousand for ten grand yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yep so, I mean, it just stories like that. It's just like, yeah. And, and Jeff said, yeah, that's fake news. It, it, that is the epitome of fake news right there. But we're tugging on heartstrings. And the average people are like just, you're just believing everything that just, they were said, that said and they plus, said. I, and, and UPS is an easy company to dislike. Right. So, because everybody's had packages that they have lost or damaged. Right. So, you're never going to defend UPS. Right. Well, you're never going to defend Amazon. You're never going to defend. You're never going to target. You're, you're never going to. You're never going to defend Apple. Right. Well, well I will. But, no, I, know. well, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's just uh, it's it's crazy. And then I mean, if you us as collectors, this guy, they wrote on there sports card collector for that guy. Like that's what he does. He's a collector for his job. That's what it said on there. And you're any of us are having our parents ship the cards across country. You're not going to tell them to insure it. You're not gonna tell. You're not gonna do any of that. You're not gonna do any of that. You're just gonna have them just go ahead, Dad. Just blindly ship it to me and hope it gets there. 1961 Stan Makita, 82, 80, 8212 dollars and ninety nine. Such a such a random number. And the nine <laughs> the ninety nine cents to ninety nine. Yeah, because you know what it was. I think it came out to an even forty two thousand dollars. It was a it was a high enough number to get attention. And that's what they did. It was it was a plot. That's what it was. They had. They probably knew that they didn't have to sign for this package, 
and uh, well, they, they my, have them by the also, short and Also, my thing is, is and they say that they don't have pictures of the cards, right? Well, how did how did they have all this information to document the cards? Right. Because yeah. that, that's an Excel spreadsheet that somebody just, you know, populated. Right, exactly. So how do you know those cards were even in the binders? Well, that's the other thing. Why wouldn't they just put? Why wouldn't they just go for two hundred k then at that point? And why wouldn't they just ship the cards out in the binders? Why? Right. Did, why did they take them out? Did they, what did they take them out and put them in? I don't know. Probably a box. Yeah, just without without sleeves, without anything. They're just gonna slide just around. Eight eight thousand dollars Stan Makita card, just like yeah, thrown in thrown in a thrown in a box. Paul says the guys the guys eyebrows got in the way. Probably, <laughs> probably could have could have been could have been yeah. Um, but. Uh, yeah, so that's interesting. I wanted to end the show with that. Well, we got museum guys, so check it out. That, Mo- that's also true. That's a good point. Um, she was so happy on the phone, and supposedly she lost forty thousand yeah. dollars worth worth of cards. She got a check for ten grand, and she was like, "Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank thank you for doing this. Come on, if yeah. you if you basically lost tr- a true f- value of forty thousand dollars, and they gave you back." 10 grand you'd be pissed yeah. you're all where's my thirty thousand dollars right yeah if you shipped out a i wouldn't you wouldn't be like luca rpa or a logo man you wouldn't be like oh thank you for everything you did i got ten thousand dollars back but i'm still out 30 grand yeah exactly so yeah come on come on chicago abc nbc what was that cbs investigated do better investigation it was wrong yeah come talk to me <laughs> fake news all right well, that's it. We got a sold-out museum break, and we but we do have more museum available on the site, mojobreak.com. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're going to be probably announcing some of our national plans here in the upcoming shows uh, and stuff that we have going on as we head oh, into yeah. uh, one of the biggest times of years for this we go. We get to go to Chicago, home of the best Mexican food. And, uh, yeah. And, and maybe, <laughs> like, we can, maybe we can show up in these guys' doorstep. Oh, yeah, Chicago, the best Mexican food. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to try to get. I'm going to try to get some this time. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Well, Jeff, we'll... Jeff, Jeff's going to get mad. Sorry, sorry, Chicago Mexican food. <laughs> Jeff, I think we need to meet up and have a Mexican food dinner in Chicago. No, I think we got to do it. Uh, I'm actually good off that. I, dude, I want to know. <laughs> I, I no, I'm down. I'm. I am I'm very. I, mean, I am. I am open. I'm going to go get what Chicago is known for: pizza, mm. whatever they're known for, Italian beef, because they ain't known for Mexican food. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, deep dish for me wasn't for me. It, 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 I tried it. Oh, as, dude, it's so know, good. If I, if I wanted lasagna, it's, I'd get no, lasagna. It's so good. You know? It's so good. You're missing out. Yeah, it's so good. I want a nap. But all right, guys, we'll see you guys next week on the hype. But uh, check out our breaks, mojobreak.com, and peace out. Peace.